الحمد لله الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا به وتوحيدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما مزيدا أما بعد I start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to gather here today in the most beloved of places to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the masjid and alhamdulillah this is a masjid walillah alhamd that propagates a tawheed and the son of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and no doubt this is a blessing from the blessings of Allah Azza wa Jal that we should be grateful for and appreciate. My talk today is concerning a portion of a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And no doubt, even just reading the hadith along with the explanation of Al Hafid ibn Rajab, Rahimahullah. I think I was the first to benefit because when we deliver lectures like this, no doubt the speaker, alhamdulillah, benefits immensely. When reading the ayat from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and likewise the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with understanding of the salaf. So this firstly is a reminder to myself and I hope that it also serves as a reminder to the brothers and the sisters. Because in these days we are in need of the like of this advice based upon the book of Allah and the son of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the hadith, the portion of the hadith that we will discuss is the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ النَّصْرَ مَعَ الصَّبْرِ Know that victory will come with patience. Victory, success, it will come with patience. Al-Hafid ibn Rajab rahimahullah he said وَهَذَا مُوَافِقْ لِقَوْلِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ And this agrees with the saying of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala قال الذين يظنون أنهم ملاق الله كم من فئة قليلة غلبت فئة كثيرة بإذن الله والله مع الصابرين. And those who were certain that they would meet Allah عز وجل, they said, كم من فئة قليلة. How many times does a small group of people غلبت فئة كثيرة overcome a large powerful group of people? By the will of Allah, bi-idhnillah. Wallahu ma'as sabirin. And Allah is with the patient. And the portion I want to highlight here, insha'Allah, which is relevant to each and every one of us sitting here today, Al-Habid ibn Rajab rahimahullah ta'ali, he speaks about being patient from various angles. But I want to talk about what he termed, he said, وَكَذَلِكَ جِهَادَ الْعَدُوَ الْبَاطِنِ Striving and struggling against one's inner soul. Yes. وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ النَّصْرَ مَعَ الصَّبْرِ Know that victory comes with patience. Yes, even you being victorious over your own soul, it requires patience. For you to be victorious, to conquer your nafs, it requires patience. He said, وَكَذَلِكَ جِهَادَ الْعَدُوَ الْبَاطِنِ Ibn Rajabi said, وَهُوَ جِهَادَ النَّفْسِ وَالْهَوَى And this is the struggle against one's soul and desires and lusts. فَإِنَّ جِهَادَهُمَ مِنْ أَعْظَمِ الْجِهَادِ For verily struggling and striving against one's soul and one's lusts and desires is from the greatest forms of al-jihad. كَمَا قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ As the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said, الْمُجَاهِدُ مَنْ جَاهَدَ نَفْسَهُ فِي اللَّهِ That the true mujahid, the one who performs al-jihad al-shara'i, is the one that strives and struggles against their own soul for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. 
He said, وقال عبد الله بن عمر لمن سأله عن الجهاد عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنه He said to the one who asked him about the jihad ibda bi nafsik start with yourself yes start with your own soul fajahidha and struggle against it and strive against it purify your nafs and brothers and sisters we have to be realistic and honest with ourselves many of us tarabbayna fi mithli hadhil bilad we were raised in the likes of these lands so regardless there are certain things that we need to purify and address within our own souls. Maybe some people, they are trodden, they are tested with jealousy. The individual has to struggle and strive against their soul. Some people may be tested with arrogance, kibr. They have to strive and struggle against their own soul. Some people may be tested with stinginess and being miserly. They have to strive and struggle against their own soul. And so on and so forth. So Abdullah ibn Umar... He said to someone who asked him about the jihad, he said, Ibda bi nafsik, start with your own self. Sometimes people, they want to worry about everyone else and they forget, well, iyadu billah, about their own self. And then he said, Wabda bi nafsika fagzuha. And he said, start with your own soul and conquer it first. Conquer your nafs. Likewise, Ibn Rajab, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Waqala Ibrahim, Ibn Abi Abla, he said, لِقَوْمٍ جَاءُوا مِنَ الْغَزْوِي He said to a group of people who had returned from a battle, قَدْ جِئْتُمْ مِنَ الْجِهَادِ الْأَصْغَرِ فَمَا فَعَلْتُمْ فِي الْجِهَادِ الْأَكْبَرِ He said to them, you have returned back. So these individuals, they came back from a battle. He said, you've returned back from the lesser jihad. But what have you done about the major, the greater jihad? قالوا, and they asked, وَمَا الْجِهَادَ الْأَكْبَرُ What is the greatest struggle? He responded to them, جِهَاد الْقَلْبِ Striving and struggling with one's heart. Striving and struggling against one's qalb, purifying it from the various illnesses and diseases. If you look at the book, The Major Sins, that were compiled by Shaykh al-Islam al-Mujaddid, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah, at the beginning of the book, a number of the major sins are major sins of the qalb, the heart. Showing the importance of purifying the qalb. Ibn Rajab rahimahullah ta'ala, he goes on to say, وَقَالُوا أَبُوْ بَكْرِ السِّدِّيقِ فِي وَسِيَّتِهِ لِعُمَرَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمَا حِينَ اِسْتَخْلَفَهَا Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, he said in his advice to Umar, when he was appointed as the caliph, he said, إِنَّ أَوَّلَ مَا أُحَذِّرُكَ نَفْسَكِ he said the first thing, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he said, Awwal ma uhadhiruka nafsak. He said the first thing I warn you against, he said, is your soul which is within you. That's the first thing. فَهَذَا الْجِهَادْ يَحْتَاجُ أَيْضًا إِلَى sabr. Look what Ibn Rajabi said. And brothers and sisters, this is a beautiful point. Because when you see some people, and may Allah Azza wa Jalla grant us all firmness. نَصَلَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ يُثَبِّتْنَا جَمِيعًا because tathbeet is from Allah Azza wa Jal. I mentioned that today in the khutbah. A person being firm upon the truth is not due to your intelligence. It is not due to your knowledge. It is not due to your strength. It is something that Allah Azza wa Jal, He is the one that grants the servant success to remain firm. Because there's nothing special about the servant. Rather that blessing comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But unfortunately, some of the people, subhanAllah, on this journey to the Akhirah, you look at them and you see that they're defeated. You look at them and you see, subhanAllah, my brother, my sister, look, you've been defeated. You've been conquered. You've been overcome. You've lost the plot. And one of the reasons is because they didn't have patience. And the Prophet ﷺ, what did he say? I'lam, no. No what? Inna nasra, the victory. It comes with what? Sabr. You have to be patient. And patience, it does not stop until you leave this dunya, until you die. Being patient, it does not cease until you leave this world. May Allah Azza wa Jalla bless us all with a good ending. <coughs> Listen to these words of Ibn Rajab, subhanAllah, profound. He said, Fahad al jihad, meaning the struggle against one's soul. The struggle against one's soul. Yahtaju aydan ila sabr. It requires patience. فَمَنْ صَبْرَ عَلَى مُجَاهَدَةِ نَفْسِهِ وَهَوَاهُ وَشَيْطَانِهِ غَلَبُهُ وَحَسَلَهُ وَالنَّصِرُ وَالظَّفَرُ 
The one who is patient with striving and struggling against their own soul. Because it may be difficult. It's going to يحتاج إلى jihad. And some of the scholars of the Salaf, they likened striving against the soul and trying to purify the soul like training a wild horse. It may be difficult at the beginning, but the fruits are great and immense. فَمَنْ صَبَرَ عَلَى مُجَاهَدَةِ نَفْسِهِ وَهَوَا وَشْعِطَانِهِ Ibn Rajabi said, whoever is patient with the struggle against their own soul, the struggle against their desires, and the struggle against their shaytan, غَلَبَهُ وَحَسَلَهُ وَالنَّصَرُ Then yes, they will overcome it and attain victory and triumph. Yes, if you are patient, Allah Azza wa Jalla, He promises you victory. Subhanahu wa ta'ala and triumph. وَمَلَكَ نَفْسَهُ فَصَارَ عَزِيزًا مَلِكًا This person, he will have control over his own nafs. And he will be noble and he will be a king in his own right. وَمَنْ جَزِعَ وَلَمْ يَصْبِرْ عَلَى مُجَاهَدَةِ نَفْسِهِ However, the opposite, look. And whoever is impatient and lacks patience in the struggle against their soul, purifying their soul, غُلِبَ وَقُهِرَ وَأُسِرْ Then they will be defeated, they will be conquered, and they will be taken as a captive, a prisoner. He said, وَصَارَ عَبْدًا دَلِيلًا أَسِيرًا فِي يَدَيْ شَيْطَانِهِ وَهَوَا And this type of servant, the one who is not patient in struggling against his own soul, in the struggle and the battle against the devil, they will become a lowly, captured slave in the hands of the devil and their desires. May Allah protect us all from that. And sometimes, ikhwan, you see, subhanallah, may Allah grant us all firmness. And may he guide our brothers and sisters who have strayed from the correct path. You see some, subhanallah, sometimes brothers or sisters, when you look at them, they're like they're defeated, like they've given up, like they've been captured. And you see the wisdom behind the words of Imam Ibn Rajab, rahimahullah ta'ala. And he said, Kama qil, it was said previously in lines of poetry. إِذَا الْمَرْءُ لَمْ يَغْلِبْ هَوَاهُ أَقَامَهُ بِمَنْزِلَةٍ فِيهَا الْعَزِيزُ ذَلِيلُ It was said in, in some lines of poetry, if the individual does not conquer his desires, male or female, young or old, if they do not conquer their desires, they place themselves in a position where someone who was once noble is now humiliated. May Allah protect us from that. Likewise, Qal ibn Mubarak, Abdullah ibn Mubarak, min, min a'imati salaf, from the imams of the salaf, he said, Man sabara fama aqalla ma yasbir, wa man jazi'a fama aqalla ma yatamatta'a. He said, whoever is patient, then how short will they have to be patient? Now, if you are patient, brothers and sisters, the reward is great. Being patient upon the obedience of Allah Azza wa Jal, being patient, in staying away from the disobedience of Allah Azza wa Jal, being patient upon what Allah Azza wa Jal has decreed, for you, being patient until the angel of death, he takes your soul, naam, and being patient. If you slip, naam, that you turn and you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being patient like that, the rewards are great in this life and in the akhirah. Ibn Mubarak, he said, rahimahullah, whoever is patient, then how short will they have to be patient for? And whoever is impatient, then how little will they enjoy it? When you look at people, subhanAllah, and they are disobeying Allah Azza wa Jal, and they think, they, they think that they are doing something because of what the shaitan has beautified for them. In reality, you see the misery, subhanAllah, upon their faces. And you see the misery that they have purchased and bought for themselves. It's like anyone, anyone who disobeys Allah Azza wa Jal, he, he has acquired a portion of misery dep depending upon the extent of his disobedience. And there are many examples for that. Look at the people, subhanAllah, that take drugs and sell drugs. The people that disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people that want to live that street life. Look at the misery that you see upon their faces. You see them. And alhamdulillah, those who Allah azza wa jal wa ta'ala grant success to repent from that type of life, they tell you. 
about the misery that they experienced. Even though others may look at them and say, oh wow, look at them. They're enjoying themselves. No, they're not enjoying themselves. Rather, they are captive. And they are a slave. And they are in the, the net of the shaitan. May Allah Azza protect each and every one of us. So Ibn Rajab, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, the saying of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna nasra ma'asabar, that verily victory, it comes with patience, no doubt also it encompasses and it refers to fighting and struggling against one's inner enemy, which is the soul. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, wa inna al-faraj ma'al karb. Surely with adversity, with hardship, there will come relief. With adversity, with hardship, there will come relief. And Ibn Rajab, he, alhamdulillah, he mentions a detailed explanation, but obviously because of the time restraint, I will just mention a portion of it. He gives some examples. He said, وَكَمْ قَصَّ سُبْحَانَهُ And how many times has Allah Azza wa Jal Tabaraka wa Ta'ala informed us of stories where he saved his prophets when they faced dire situations and difficulties. And then he goes on to give examples. Yes. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he said, وَإِنَّ الْفَرَجْ مَعَ الْكَرْبِ Surely with hardship, there will come relief. Yes, if you are patient, brothers and sisters, upon the book of Allah and the son of the Prophet ﷺ, with the understanding of the Salaf, then yes, there will come relief. There will come help without a shadow of a doubt. And the person should have yaqeen, certainty concerning that. Especially even the people of the Sunnah, they should be certain of this. Like Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he mentioned in some lines of his poetry, he mentioned about the people of falsehood, he said, they feel pain like you feel pain. But the shahid is what? Like they are being patient, we should be more patient in trying to propagate a tawheed and the son of the Prophet wasallam, warning against shirk, warning against innovation and trying to propagate obedience and warn against disobedience. Ibn Rajab rahimahullah gives some examples from the stories of the prophets how Allah Azza wa Tabaraka wa Ta'ala rescued them after they face difficult and dire situations. And none of us have experienced anything similar to this, what Allah Azza wa Jalla has informed us in the Quran. He said, Like for example, when Allah Azza wa Jalla, He saved Nuh and those with him in the ark. Allah Azza wa Jalla, He saved Nuh and those with Nuh, the believers, Upon the ship. Likewise, Allah Azza wa Jal, وَكَإِنْجَاءِ إِبْرَاهِيمٍ مِنَ النَّارِ When Ibrahim was thrown into the fire. And Allah Azza wa Jal, He rescued Ibrahim from the fire. To the extent that, look, yes, when Ibrahim was, comes in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, Ibrahim, when he was thrown into the fire, what did he say? Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah Azza wa Jalla is sufficient for me. And He is the best protector. Look, He had certainty. He had certainty that with that difficult situation, after being thrown into the fire, that ease was, relief was going to come. He never had any doubt. And Allah Azza wa Jalla commanded the fire to be cold and safe for Ibrahim. Likewise, Allah Azza wa Jalla saved Musa and his people. From the sea. And he drowned the enemy of Musa, Fir'aun, and his army. And then likewise, Ibn Rajabi said the story of Ayyub, the story of Yunus, and the stories of Muhammad وسلم, with his enemies. And how Allah Azza he saved the Prophet وسلم, from them. Like the story when the Prophet was in the cave. And the mushrikun, they were trying to hunt him down. Again, a difficult time. But the Prophet wasallam was certain that Allah Azza wa Ta'ala was going to give them victory. Imagine that you're in that type of situation. 
But the Prophet ﷺ was certain of what? That with adversity, with difficulty, there's going to come relief. Relief is coming. Likewise, the Battle of Badr, the believers were outnumbered. Likewise, Uhud. How Allah Azza protected the Prophet ﷺ. Even on the day of Uhud, the day of Ahzab, when the confederates from the Mushrikeen gathered together to annihilate the believers. When it was said to the Prophet Sallallahu they have all gathered together to annihilate you. So you should be scared. What did the Prophet Sallallahu again? Likewise, the Prophet Sallallahu he said, Hasbunallah wa ni'ma al wakil. Allah is really sufficient for us and he is the best protector. He was certain of what? That with difficulty there's going to come relief. Not like some, subhanAllah, brothers and sisters that you see them selling a portion of the religion billah, for the benefit of their worldly affairs. And as we mentioned in the beginning, firmness, it is a blessing that comes from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned it. He said that al-khalqu qisman, the creation, there are two categories. Muwaffaqun bi tathbeet, the one that Allah Azza wa Jalla grants success and gives them firmness, wal makhdul bi tarki tathbeet, and the one Allah Azza wa Jalla forsakes, and He is not granted that firmness. And again, this firmness is a blessing from Allah Azza wa Jalla, and it is not because of يعني, a degree. Look at Yasir Qadi, the man he has a master's degree. I was looking at his bath, subhanAllah. It was a refutation upon Jaham ibn Safwan, the founder of the Jahmiyyah, refuting him. That was his master's thesis. Now today he's saying what? That Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah and Daesh, ISIS, wal iyadu billah, they're upon the same methodology. So look, a degree is not going to save you. A great amount of knowledge is not going to save you. Yes, alhamdulillah, no doubt knowledge is beneficial and we should all learn and strive in attaining ilm. But that firmness, it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why sometimes you find individuals they have a small amount of knowledge, but Allah Azza wa Jalla grants them firmness. That's why Al Barbahari rahimahullah. That's why the people of falsehood they want you to turn away from the books of the Salaf. They want you to be uncomfortable to go and return to Asul al Sunnah Imam Ahmad, and they want to belittle it. They say, look, it's only a small treatise; you can read it in an hour or less than an hour. The Salaf used to say, if a person traveled to China to learn Asul al Sunnah, it would be يعني, a journey that would be considered to be short. Yes, we're not going to be turned away from the books of the Salaf. Because the usul at the present, in that book, Alhamdulillah, if the believer was to hold onto them, no doubt that individual would be upon khair. Al-Barbahari said, knowledge is what? Knowledge is not having a great amount of riwayah, narrating a whole lot. Rather, knowledge is what? That an individual, Alhamdulillah, we know al-ilm is that a person sticks to the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, the way of the Salaf. That is al-ilm. Even if the individual has few books. Even if the individual has a small amount of knowledge. But if Allah Azza wa Jal wa Ta'ala grants that servant tathbeet, firmness, then they will not be shaken. And there are examples of that in history where Allah Azza wa Jal subhanahu wa ta'ala individuals who may not have, have, have possessed knowledge as much as others, but Allah Azza wa Jal gave them tathbeet and they remain firm in the face of various trials and tests. Whereas others were shaken. Likewise, Ibn Rajab rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, as for the saying of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَإِنَّمَا عَلْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى Indeed, verily, with difficulty, there comes ease. And that is derived from the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, سَيَجْعَلُ اللَّهُ بَعْدُ عُسْرِ يُسْرَى Allah azza wa jal will grant ease after hardship. And likewise, the saying of Allah Azza wa Jal, فَإِنَّمَا عَلْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّمَا عَلْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى Verily with difficulty comes ease. Verily with difficulty comes ease. And there comes Ikhwan, a narration that is narrated from some of the companions. It's not authentic as a hadith, rather it's da'if. But Ruya, it, is, it has been narrated from some of the companions. That they said, لَنْ يَغْلِبَ عُسْرًا يُسْرَيْنِ 
that one period of difficulty cannot be overcome by two periods of ease. Who, what does that mean? Who can tell me? لَنْ يَغْلِبَ عُسْرًا يُسْرَيْنِ One period of difficulty cannot be overcome by two periods of ease. What does that mean? لَنْ يَغْلِبَ عُسْرًا يُسْرَيْنِ One period of difficulty cannot be overcome by two periods of ease. Allah alam, that's debatable, it depends on the person. Naam. What does that mean? Where is that derived from? That one period, and we said it's not authentic as a hadith, however, it's narrated from some of the Sahaba, well, ma'na sahih. Dhakaru, a'immat al tafsir. Naam, some of the imams of, the, of tafsir mentioned it. Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala mentions it. Lan yaghliba usran yusrain. That one period of difficulty cannot be overcome by two periods of ease. Fadl. Yeah, but where is it taken? Where, which ayat? Huh? I can't see who's talking. Madri man in Fadl, naam. Okay, tayyib, khalas. Somebody may say that al-usr here is more than one. It's mentioned twice. Huh? What about it? It's a bit shaken. I mean, are you sure? Are you unsure? Huh? Naam, here, Asadi rahimahullah ta'ala mentions it and others preceded him. When Allah Azza wa Jalla said, فَإِنَّمَا الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى Ta'rif al-usr, al-usr, when Allah Azawajal, he said, indeed, with difficulty, there comes ease. Al-usr is mentioned in the definite form, mu'arraf. So therefore, it's referring to one period of difficulty. However, yusr is mentioned in the indefinite form, nakira. So therefore, what came before that difficulty was what? It was ease. Before you experience difficulty, you, alhamdulillah, you're in a situation of ease. So before the difficulty, there was ease. Then comes the difficulty. When the difficulty passes, then comes what? Ease. So that is why it is said, لَنْ يَغْلِبَ عُسْرًا يُسْرًا That one period of difficulty, be patient. Why? Because before it, you, you experience a state of ease. And after it, you are promised there will be a state of ease. May Allah bless us all to be patient. And ikhwan, look. Then Ibn Rajab, he mentions... He said, وَمِنْ لَطَائِفِ أَسْرَارِ اِقْتِرَانِ الْفَرَجِ بِالْكَرْبِ وَالْيُسْرِ بِالْعُسْرِ One of the underlying wisdoms of relief following an adversity or a hardship and ease following difficulty, one of the underlying wisdoms of this is that أَنَّ الْكَرْبَ إِذَا اشْتَدَّ وَعَظُمَ وَتَنَاهَا حَصَلَ لِلْعَبْدِ الْإِيَاسُ مِنْ كَشْفِهِ مِنْ جِهَةِ الْمَخْلُوقِينَ is that when hardship becomes severe and great, if a person experiences great hardship and difficulty, then the servant will despair of being helped by, the, by way of the creation. If you're in a situation where it's so difficult and the situation is so dire, then the servant is going to despair. The creation, they can't help me now. وَتَعَلَّقَ قَلْبَهُ بِاللَّهِ وَحْدًا And at that point, the heart of the servant, it becomes attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. وَهَادَ هُوَ حَقِيقَةَ التَّوَكَّلَ عَلَى اللَّهِ And this is the reality or the essence of placing one's trust and reliance in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because at difficult times, naam, those, when a person is maybe going through a chronic illness, or a person is at sea, drowning when no one is in sight. Or a similar dire situation where a person does not see a way out. Ta'allaqa qalbuhu, the heart of the servant, it becomes attached to Allah Azza wa alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is the essence of tawakkul, placing one's trust and reliance in Allah Azza wa Jal, wa huwa min ahzam al-asbab. 
And Ibn Rajab, he said, and this is from the greatest means of seeking one's needs, as surely as Allah Azza wa Jal, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَكْفِي مَنْ تَوَكَّلَ عَلَيْهِ For verily Allah Azza wa is sufficient for the one who places their trust in Him. كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهُ Azza wa Jal, as Allah, He said, وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَوَحَسْبُهُ And whoever places their trust in Allah Azza wa Jal, then Allah is sufficient for them. And then Ibn Rajab, rahimahullah, he goes on to mention, he said, قَالَ الْفُضَيْلَ الْفُضَيْلَ Ibn Iyad, he said, رَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ لو يئست من الخلق حتى لا تريد منهم شيئا he said by Allah if you despair of the creation to the extent that you do not want anything from them لا أعطاك مولاك كل ما تريد he said then verily your protector Allah Azza wa Jalla will give you everything that you want meaning that you should place your trust in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and you should believe firmly that with this difficulty is going to come ease and then he said فَإِنَّ الْمُؤْمِنِ Also, if for example you're in a situation, if the servant is in a situation where relief is not coming, but the servant, alhamdulillah, is certain of the promise of Allah Azza wa Jal, because Allah Azza wa Jal promises victory for those who are patient. Allah Azza wa Jal promises victory for those who place their trust in him, for those who fear him, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Whoever fears Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal will provide for them a way out. If the believer, Ibn Rajabi said, relief is slow in coming, and after supplicating frequently to Allah Azza wa Jal and begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the servant, his dua, he does not see that it is, it is being answered. What do they do in that situation? Do they start, look, even in that situation, do they start to blame everyone else? Some people, they blame other people. Oh, it's your fault. I'm in this situation because of you. You know, you're the one you've ruined my life. People, for example, they go through marital disputes or marital problems. The, 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 the marriage, it fails. Well, Instead of a person being firm, and content with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and analyzing their own soul and their own shortcomings. Some people, they look to try and blame someone else. Ibn Rajabi said, the servant, the believer, even if, for example, the relief is slow in coming, and they make a lot of supplication, dua, and they beg of Allah azza wa jalla wa ta'ala, but they do not see that their supplication is being answered, what do they do? يَرْجِعِ إِلَى نَفْسِي بِاللَّا they blame their own soul. They turn and they blame their own nafs. وَقَالَ لَهَا And they say to their own soul, this has only happened to me because of you. وَلَوْ كَانَ فِيكَ خَيْرٍ لَأُجِبْتِ If there was any good in you, I would have been answered. My supplication would be answered. And Ibn Rajab, he said, وَهَذَا اللَّوْمْ أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ كَثِيرٍ مِنَ الطَّاعَاتِ Blaming oneself in this way is more beloved to Allah than performing many acts of obedience. Look, the servant, subhanAllah, instead of blaming, don't complain to the creation, they can't help you. If you have a complaint, take it to Allah Azza wa Jalla, wa ta'ala. Look, the father of Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam, min kathrati buka'ihi, he cried so much that he went blind, but alhamdulillah, Allah Azza wa Jalla blessed him at the end. Allah Azza wa Jalla provided him relief at the end. Because he had thiqa billah, he was certain with that what? Patience is beautiful. Wallahu al-musta'an. We seek the aid of Allah. He was certain that relief is coming. Even though, yes, he experienced difficulty along the way. He lost his sight. He cried so much. Qala ahla tafsir. From so much crying. He lost his sight. But Allah has blessed him at the end from patience. Ibn Rajab, he said, فَإِنَّهُ يُجِبُ إِنْكِسَارَ الْعَبْدِ لِمَوْلَاهُ وَاعْتِرَافُهُ لَهُ بِأَنَّهُ أَهْلٌ لِمَا نَزَلَ بِهِ مِنَ الْبَلَاءِ And again, brothers and sisters, this type of attitude, yes, this is from the reasons for one's supplication to be answered. You turn to your own self. You blame your own self. You look at your own self. This, this is from the reasons for us, the supplication to be answered and for Allah Azza wa Jalla to remove that servant from that difficulty and that hardship. May Allah Azza wa Jalla grant us all success. So those words, 
we see the benefit of those words even though there were very few words but the Prophet ﷺ was given what Jawami al kalim few words but immense meaning and immense benefit for the one who takes time to reflect and understand that is why alhamdulillah the people of the sunnah they study what the quran and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi with the understanding of the sahaba and every time you reflect upon a hadith or you reflect upon an ayah maybe some benefits become apparent to you that were not apparent before and then you realize subhanallah you know what in my life i need it, i need this even like I said, preparing for the lesson today, just reading the explanation of Ibn Rajab subhanAllah and applying it to one's own soul and applying it to what we experience in our life and what we see around us throughout, for example, uh, our experience, there's immense benefit. And then subhanAllah, certain things, yes, look at that person, they weren't patient. And I mentioned subhanAllah to brothers, individuals, may Allah Azza wa Jalla again grant us all firmness. And may Allah Azza wa Ta'ala protect us from going astray. رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِقْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدِدْ هَدَيْتَنَا وَهَبْ لَنَا بِلَدُّنْكَ رَحْمَةً إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَابِ That you see, subhanAllah, brothers who may have been striving, they were seeking knowledge, of, they sacrificed their time and their effort, and they traveled, and they went to far places. نَعَمْ And they went to places. نَعَمْ And they were diligent. But then, they lose patience. And if you look, Ikhwan, one of the tests that unfortunately... Many of the people are failing in this time is, the, is social media. Individuals who at one point were upon istiqama, uprightness, striving. Not saying, none of us are perfect, Ikhwan. When we, subhanAllah, we mention these words, it, we're not saying, we're not malaika, we're not angels. The angels, Allah Azza wa said about them, لا يعسون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون. They do not disobey Allah in what He has commanded them to do, and they do whatever they're commanded. We are not angels, we are human beings. And that is why I love the, when Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah he talks about the necessary ingredients to be happy. Unwan al-Sa'ada. He mentioned what? Patience. That it relates to what we're going through now. Being patient. When faced with calamity. Showing gratitude. When Allah Azza wa has blessed you. And he said, and repenting or asking Allah's forgiveness when you sin. Yes, the servant is going to sin. The servant is going to fall short. He's not an angel. What should he do? Should he say, Khalas, I, you know, I've disobeyed Allah Azza wa Jalla, it's over for me. They sh that's despairing of the mercy of Allah Azza wa No, they should repent to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. And that's why Ibn al-Qayyim, Rahmatullahi Ali. And that's where you see the fiqh of the imma, the imams of the religion, they are the ingredients of happiness. When you disobey Allah Azza wa Jalla, you, you repent to Allah sincerely and you continue on your journey. Some of the people who are walking with us, subhanAllah, may have been better than us, or we consider them to be better than us, on the journey, on this journey, because it's a journey. It's not going to stop until we leave this world. That's why you look at the imam of the religion, Al Imam Ahmed used to say, Allah midna ala al Islam wa Sunnah. Oh Allah, that's Imam Ahmed. Oh Allah, bless us to die upon Islam and the Sunnah. Some of the brothers and the sisters, they, some of them, they mother, you can see that they were not patient. And then people will, Iyadu Billah, you have individuals who are wicked and evil, they start blaming the da'wah. How can you blame the da'wah? Salafiyah heal Islam. That is Islam. How can you blame Islam for the shortcomings of individuals? Rather, it's the individual themselves. Yes, Salafiyah is perfect. Islam is perfect. But the individual, that's where the shortcoming lies. And when they apply this term, burnout, it's because of the individual, they lack patience. The fault is not with the kitab and the sunnah. We know that, alhamdulillah, that's revelation from Allah Azza wa Jal. Which is perfect. The fault lies with the individual. The Prophet wasallam he said, Inna nasra ma sabr. Victory, it will come with patience. If you are patient upon this journey, you will be victorious. If you are patient, for you is Jannah. May Allah Azza wa grant us all paradise and protect us from the hellfire. And it doesn't stop until we depart from this world. Wajazakumullah khairan. And that's what... I want you to share if there's any istidraq or any correction. Barakallahu feekum. Alhamdulillah. Or anyone needs something to be uh, clarified, then tafaddal. Habidakumullah. And if not, then alhamdulillah we can stop there. Wa jazakumullah khairan. Wa barakallahu feekum. رق النفسي والشيطاني معروف نعم ابن القيم رحمة الله عليه نعم يمنشن in his lines in Nunia 
that the, the servants, they flee from the servitude that they were created for. Meaning, as Allah Azzawajal tells us in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَيْنَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I did not create the jinn or mankind except to worship me alone. However, they were, they were trialed and they were tested to, of being slaves and captives of their, of, mother, of their own souls and of the devil. And that's what you see, no doubt about it, brothers and sisters. The Prophet ﷺ, what did he say? Ta'isa abd dinar ta'isa abd dirham Miserable is the slave of the dinar, miserable is the slave of the, the dirham. Meaning those individuals that give precedence to attaining worldly enjoyment over working for the akhirah, the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all tawfiq. Wa subhanakallahu wa bihamdika shadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiru wa tubu ilayk.